Senator for uh, Thank you, Mr. President. Appreciate the opportunity to come down to the floor once again and speak uh, to you and to the American people. I come to the floor today because there's something that too many people in Washington, D.C. are missing right now. And uh, that is, you know, we're Americans first. You know, we're Americans first. It's a simple idea, but one that seems easily forgotten in politics because Washington has a way of making elected officials act like partisans uh, rather than problem solvers. For example, how can any member of the Senate be 100% right? I, I just don't know how that happens. Uh, and how can they also vote 100% of the time with their own party? Do they honestly believe that the, their party is right 100% of the time? Or is it just easier than uh, going with the alternative? Easier than working together with people that you don't agree with on every single issue? Mr. President, I ran for the Senate to make a difference, and I believe the voters of this country sent us here to find ways in which we can all agree, to move our country forward, to make things better. Governing wisely doesn't mean spending all of our time politicking, make the other side uncomfortable vo uh, by voting a certain way or taking uncomfortable votes, putting those votes in the bank for more petty attacks during the election season. But why else will we spend you know, hours and days trying to ram through one-sided bills that, that can't pass simply to highlight our differences? Is that honestly why we were sent here today? Because there's no Republican bill that's going to pass, and there's no Democrat bill that's going to pass. It needs to be a bipartisan, bicameral effort that the president will sign. And we face very huge challenges here today, and that means we must rise to the occasion and rise above politics to accomplish the very big things that the American people expect from their elected officials. Our jobs and economic picture, as we all know, is bleak. The line of unemployed workers would stretch across America and back again. Our national, debts, our national debt and deficits are spiraling, uh, spiraling out of control. And working families are getting squeezed by the high cost of energy, high health care costs, high education costs. Businesses are squeezed by high tax rates, burdensome regulations, and uncertainty about the, the future and the political leadership in this country. Our, our, our housing market is frozen, and the government is making it harder and harder rather than easier uh, for borrowers to refinance. And yet, with all these challenges that we have, the answer here in Washington is just kind of more of the same, more threats, more gridlock, more partisanship. And you know what? I, I say enough already, because I've said this back home in Massachusetts, and people uh, really, uh, I think, greatly appreciate the sentiments. We're Americans first. And if we don't work together right now, this moment in time right now, then we're, we're going to miss a great opportunity. We need to focus on jobs. We need to focus on the economy. That's what I've done since the day I got elected here. And I believe the American people deserve better. They deserve better than congressional gridlock and, and political gamesmanship. For example, Mr. Mr. President, the president, not you as president, Mr. President, but the president, <laughs> has given us a jobs bill that isn't perfect, but it's a start. The majority leader has said that the Senate might consider the president's package eventually. Really? Eventually? We're in a financial emergency. We're going to talk about creating jobs eventually. Well, let's be honest with those that sent us here. The current proposal from the president isn't going to pass either chamber if it relies entirely on tax increases to pay for it. I know it. You know it. So. When we bring it up, are we going to try to make it better? Are we going to try to pass it? So I, I urge the majority leader to bring the jobs bill to the floor, the, a jobs bill to the floor that can actually get 60 votes and also have a chance in passing in the House. You know, what, would, what would they look Well, they'd look like parts of the president's proposal that actually have bipartisan support and can help our fellow Americans immediately. We should take the things that everybody agrees on and bring them forward now, right now. We can pass a payroll tax cut for both employers and employees. I stood up when he said that. I clapped. I agree with him. We can also pass a higher, you know, his version of the Hire a Hero Act when we're going to provide tax incentives for employers to hire our, our heroes that are returning from doing really incredible service for our country. It puts them back to work. Their unemployment rate is 25%. All for it. I clapped again. It's, it's a great idea. We can get to work on reforming our tax code uh, in a way that eliminates loopholes and leads to lower rates. 
We can do these things. It's possible. Those are the things that we agree on and we should be doing immediately, not just bringing a bill forward, knowing it's not going to pass, and then spotting a particular person, a party for an election season that's so far away that if we don't do something right away, we're going to be in deep trouble and miss that opportunity, Mr. President, because we are Americans first and we can do it better and should do it better. You know, and we should also, I've been a little bit discouraged, it seems to go in ebb and flows about the ability for us to actually have an open amendment process. We had to sign a letter, you know, to the president guaranteeing that we would actually, you know, move forward with the trade agreements. And then we had an open amendment process. And quite frankly, I think when it was done, everybody was satisfied that it was just that, an open amendment process. And we got some good suggestions and sent them off to the president. And I'm eager for those bills to be passed. But we need to allow our members to offer their own ideas on job creation. There's no one particular person, whether it be the president, the majority leader, the minority leader, or any individual here that has all the ideas on job creation since when? I mean, I have a vote just like each and every one of them do. And I'm sure that you have some amendments, Mr. President, that you think would help job growth in your state. I know we've worked on one that was actually cited by independent groups as being probably the number one way to actually get the economy moving. And we won't even have the opportunity to allow that to be filed as an amendment. Is that right? Of course not. I have a number of bipartisan pieces of legislation, one of which I just referenced with you, to help boost our economy in Massachusetts, whether it's from working with our fishermen and protecting that industry that provides food for the uh, American citizens and throughout the world, or it's the high tech sector, you know, bio, pharma, you name it. My bills will help solve, as yours will and others will here, um, some of our economic problems. It won't be done overnight though, but it's a first step. I mean, there's absolutely no reason that we can't move forward to have an open amendment process on a bill that will actually create jobs. But they will make a difference in Massachusetts today. And that's what my constituents sent me here to do. Secondly, we need to focus on our debt and deficits. They're out of control. When I got here, $11.95 trillion national debt. It's up to fourteen five dollars in a little over a year. And there's plenty of blame to go around, Mr. President. I hear my colleagues up here ranting and raving and blaming everybody. But you know what? Let's just say everybody's at fault. So let's acknowledge that and set aside the sniping about whether we should blame this administration or that administration. Because quite frankly, it doesn't matter. It, it, it doesn't matter at this point. Everyone has contributed, and now everyone needs to work together to solve that, ver those, that very real problem. So I'm urging the Debt Committee to put aside partisanship and remember that we are, once again, Americans first, and we, we have an opportunity right now, right now in this moment in time, to do it better and to solve these very real problems. We should not get lost in party politics. For example, think... Think the way that great American leaders have always thought. They didn't waste time scoring points. They took the long view. They thought about uh, leaving a legacy for the next generation and leaving our country in a better place. I know, like you and many others, I have pictures of my children and my family, no grandchildren yet, here in my office, uh, here in Washington, and in Boston, and in my home. And if we care about the young people in those photos, we should be demanding Absolutely demanding. Have a lot of the folks that are not in leadership actually get up and demand a bipartisan compromise on the debt, one that finally puts us back on the track towards a balanced budget. And as you know, Mr. President, because I believe you served with them, uh, before I held this Senate seat, it was held by the late Senator Ted Kennedy. And before that, it was held by John F. Kennedy. And I'd like to remind my colleagues that it was President Kennedy who famously said, and I quote, to those whom much is given, much is expected, end quote. The voters have given us so much. They've given us so many opportunities to do it better and to be better in solving our country's very real problems. They have given us a responsibility and an opportunity to come here and work and get something done. Every minute that we waste, we let them down. With every petty attack, they get more cynical and expect less and less from the people who serve in this great and historic chamber. And while Washington bickers, their faith in our democracy is waning. So I, for one, Mr. President, uh, challenge the majority leader, the minority leader, and all the members 
to finally do something for the American people who need our leadership so badly. So let's work together on these big challenges. Let's renew the faith that the people of America have bestowed in us. And let's remember that we are Americans first and we owe it to them to do it better. So uh, Mr. President, I, I thank you and I, I yield the floor and suggest the absence of a quorum. Clerk will